What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. You guessed it, today we are reviewing the Tarte Shape Tape Foundation. Let's just call it what it is right now. I am pretty sure this is going to be the most controversial foundation launch of 2018. Okay, there I said it. Let me just say first and foremost that I am not here to bash Tarte. That is not what this video is about. I will address what all the controversy is about and give you my own thoughts on it because everyone is entitled to their own opinion. But if you're looking for me just to bash Tarte and talk shit on Tarte, this video is not for you. That is definitely not what I'm doing here. All I am doing is simply reviewing one of the most talked about foundations. I do want to address all this controversy about this foundation. If you haven't heard what's going on with this foundation and why people are so upset at Tarte about launching this foundation, then girl, you need to wake up and go check your social media because as soon as this came out and the shade range was revealed, man, the internet flipped upside down and I am telling you it is the end of the world okay I will just say that I think Tarte messed up here I really think that they messed up makeup brands should be making foundations that are meant for every single skin tone from the lightest white girl to the darkest black girl and I truly believe that I do feel like Tarte made a bad decision by launching this product when they say they have more shades coming because they wanted to get it out so fast they should have just waited and had a full launch of all the shade ranges that they were planning on making if that was the actual case okay have you ever made a mistake in life have you ever made a bad decision in life kind of reflected on it learned from it owned it and said that you were gonna fix it and do better well that's basically what Tarte has done okay it took them a week to announce something on social media yes they only announced it on the IG stories yeah they should have announced it on all their social media platforms, on their Instagram on their Twitter on their Facebook they should have did all that but they didn't my thing with this whole situation is women of color are allowed to have their opinion and are allowed to speak out on their opinion and they are allowed to comment on Tarte's posts and say how they feel. But my issue with it is people are so disgustingly rude. It makes me sick to my stomach. The kinds of things that people are saying on these posts. Tarte um, tweeted something. They said we something along the lines of we hear you guys we understand we messed up we are making more shades we're gonna fix it we ad address it in our IG stories right so I'm like reading the comments on this tweet on Twitter and I am blown away of how people are talking like it is disgusting yes you are allowed to have your opinion yes you are allowed to be upset about it but do you really have to like dig deep and like insult people and try to make people feel like pieces of shit and belittle them does that really like solve the problem to me it's you're really making yourself look really stupid and ignorant and disgusting because you feel because you don't have a proper shade range in this foundation launch that you just have the right to talk to people the way that you're talking to them no, to me that's not okay. Like, please voice your opinion and let them know you're upset and you want them to be more diverse and all these different things, but there's a respectable way to do it and I'm gonna say like a professional way to voice your opinion rather than what I saw like on these comments in this tweet. I really didn't want to comment on it and all I commented on it was something along the lines of have you ever made a mistake, learned from it, owned it, and then now you're gonna fix it and I'm telling you, People were fucking coming for me. I was blown away. And at first, like, I was commenting back, like, no, like, no, you're not going to talk to me like that. And then they started, like, making white racial comments to me. And I'm like, you don't even freaking know me telling me that, oh, at least I found my shade. Um... I am not the whitest girl out there. And as you continue to watch this video, you see that I have issues with the shade that I picked for myself. But I just couldn't believe turning this into a racial thing and like coming at me like I was involved with the decision to come out with this launch and only have 15 shade colors. I couldn't believe it. Like, and I woke up this morning and I had like over 200 notifications on all these fucking people coming for me and making racial comments to me. And I'm just like this little tiny little YouTuber here 
here that like made one comment that didn't single anybody out. I didn't make a racial comment. I didn't do any of that. And this is what these people are turning it into. I'm getting really fired up right now talking about it, but I just want to clarify. I am all about like having 50 different shade colors to accommodate every single person in this world. I am all about that. But there's a different way to voice your opinion. You don't have to be rude and you don't have to try to belittle the brand or belittle people or try to make people feel like pieces of shit by getting your message across. Like you can be polite and be professional and sound educated when you type in your comments or your tweet or whatever it is. There's just a different way of going about it. That's what I disagree with. I disagree with how these people are talking to the brand. Some people watching this video might be pissed off at me now. Might not ever watch one of my videos. And you know what? That's okay. That is totally okay because I am going to voice my opinion just like everybody else and my issue is with how people are getting their message across, not the actual message that needs to get across to Tarte because I do feel like Tarte messed up. They made a bad decision. They shouldn't have done what they did so quickly. They should have waited and had all the shades that they were planning on doing for this launch before they actually came out with it. That's what I think. I don't really know what else to say with that, so I'm just gonna continue on with this video, give you some info on this foundation. If you wanna continue watching this video, thank you, and let's get into the rest of this review. It's just like a normal tart packaging, right? And then uh, here is the bottle, and I will compare it to the Shape Tape bottle as well, so it's a little bit thicker. You get 1.01 flow ounce, and in the Shape Tape you get 0.338 flow ounces. I personally don't like the applicator. I feel like you have to do a lot of dips in to get the amount of stuff on your face that you need. I like the bottle, like it feels nice, it feels luxurious. I just would have had a pump in it instead of this applicator. So maybe, you know, as they're going through their trial and errors, maybe that's something that they changed too. I don't really know. I personally got the shade in medium neutral. On their app, they have this little survey type thing that you do to help you find out what your shade range is. So the one that they came up with with the questions that I answered was the medium neutral so that's just the one that I purchased. I do want to read to you what it says on their app for this foundation. A vegan and oil free full coverage foundation with a creamy texture and modern matte finish to complement our cult favorite concealer. If you continue watching I'm not too sure about the full coverage situation okay. It provides the same full coverage as the concealer, it smooths over pores and imperfections with rich airbrushed full coverage that dries to a flawless matte finish using a unique concealer inspired wand. The formula absorbs oil and shine while leaving skin creaseless, hydrated, free of flakiness or caking and helping to improve skin health with every application. If you continue watching, you will have my thoughts on that. They suggest buying their $28 foundation brush to use it. Now, I just used a beauty blender. So did we address everything that we needed to address? I feel like it went on a little bit of a rant, but that's okay. If you guys want to see how this foundation worked out for me, what happened while I was applying it, my final thoughts, please make sure you keep on watching. Let's get right into this foundation. I do have some glitter fallout from this eyeshadow that I'm wearing, but we're just gonna go on top of that with our Shape Tape foundation. Let's shake it up a little bit. And it's exactly like the Shape Tape. Let's just like get this on the face. I'm only gonna do a little bit to start. Let's just start with that. Let's just start with that. And let's start blending this in. It's definitely not like the fullest coverage. It's definitely a medium to full. I guess you can build it up. I'm like wondering, is this the right shade for me? I think so. Let's get some more on this side. I feel like you don't get that much product off of one little dip in there. I feel like I kind of need a little bit more over here. I don't know if this is the right color. I feel like I'm looking a little white. Damn it, if I didn't get the right color. So after I put a little bit more on this side, definitely starting to get that full coverage. It's 
So far it's looking pretty good on the skin, but I feel like the shade is too light for me, like way too light. I put a little bit more on this side again just because that's what I did with the other side, so I want everything to look nice and even. I hope this oxidizes a little bit because this is not matching my skin color, especially right now. Maybe had I not gone to Costa Rica and came back with a tan in January, I think I would feel better about the color. What I'm going to do now is set my foundation, which I do with every foundation that I wear. Just spray that all over. I like to kind of let it dry for a second. Blend it out. Did that take away some of the coverage? Because now like, I have a blemish right here and I just feel like now I can really see it. Shape Tape Concealer. Wasn't that like a full coverage concealer? Why don't we have a full coverage foundation to go with that? Wow, I really think that putting... I don't know. Like I feel like it just took all the product off. Yeah, that did something major weird to the foundation. I feel like it just like took the fucking foundation off. This foundation's doing some weird ass shit right now. Like this right here, like what the hell, like what the hell is going on? Why is it not? That is so weird. I'm like getting super disappointed here and I did not think that that was going to happen. Like it literally took off all the coverage. Okay, putting that like third layer there, now I'm getting that coverage back. But why does it have to be like that? Okay, I don't think there's much that I can do anymore with this. Get some Shape Tape Concealer on. See how it blends into the foundation. I use a different beauty sponge for my concealer. Now I'm back into my foundation sponge to blend it kind of together. I really feel like it didn't blend that well together. We are super cakey right here. Oh my God. Wow. What? Do you guys see like what's happening? Like it literally just brought like the shape tape like all the way down here. Oh man. I'm like getting really disappointed. I really didn't want that to happen. All right, let's just set this concealer because gonna be using my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder to set. Okay, the setting powder helped it a little bit. Moving on, just moving on. We might as well just use my Tarte Clay Play Face Palette that I've been using constantly. That seems to be blending in nice together, so thank God for that. We really gotta mix this in on my neck because I feel like this foundation shade just too light for me. I got this Pure Cheek Palette in my January BoxyCharm. Looking a lot closer, you guys, this foundation uh, is doing some weird, weird... Do you see that? Like, what the fuck? Why is it, like, caking all over my face? I'm, like, freaking tripping. I think I'm shooketh. Shooketh to the chorus. So we're going to use the Tardis Pro Glow. I might as well just keep the Tarte products going. See how they all mix together? We're gonna dig into fire and lit. Okay guys, I need to finish my eye look off camera. I'll be back to give you my final thoughts, see if the foundation's doing anything else weird. I am back, I have finished my entire face. I'm gonna give you my final thoughts on what I feel is going to be the most controversial foundation launch of 2018. Right? I had very, very high hopes for this foundation. I guess I had too much of high hopes for this foundation. I feel like I have just been like really, really let down. I am very, very bummed out about it. I love Tarte. I love their products. Like every single product that I have of theirs, I have so many different products. I have blushes, bronzers, all kinds of liquid lipsticks from them. I have skincare that I use of theirs. I have other foundations. I have their Shape Tape Concealer that is America's number one concealer. When there's that much hype about a product and then you actually get it and it just doesn't work out for you or like my first impression is not great and everything that I wanted, I just feel like I don't know. I don't even know how I feel right now, but I am super disappointed in it. Whatever happened when I was applying this foundation, I don't know where I went wrong and what I shouldn't have done. I'm not impressed by it. I'm not impressed by it at all. Like, I don't know if you guys can't see, but right here, this whole area right here, we got some major caking on there. It looks like I have foundation on rather than it just being my skin, which is super disappointing. 
I don't feel like there's really any coverage happening either. I felt like when I was applying it before I did my normal routine that I do every single day no matter what with whatever foundation that I'm wearing and I set it with my setting spray and then go back in and just you know pounce it into the skin so it just looks like skin. That's when I really started to see what was actually happening with the foundation. It looks like makeup and that it normally does not look like this ever. Like ever. I'm going to use it again. I don't know what I'm going to try using a brush, I think, and see if that gives me a different finish on my face. You know, from far away, I think it's looking okay. But when you get up close and personal and start, like, really looking at what's happening on your face, uh, it's just like, uh, really? Why are you doing this to us? Oh. Because I'm so shook that my thoughts are just so scatterbrained right now that I don't even know how to respond or react to it. Like I said, I am going to use it again. I'm going to use it trying to apply it with a brush rather than a beauty blender. I'm hoping that that'll work out better for me. If not, I don't know. Like, really clean my blender really, really good. Maybe use a different blender. I don't know what I'm going to do. I am going to continue to work with it. Hopefully some things change. I'm only hoping for the best right now. But I think I need to prepare for the worst and just continue to hope for the best. With that said, I don't really think there's anything else that I can say about this foundation. I thought this review was going to go completely different. Here we are. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed my first impressions on this foundation and giving you my final thoughts and review, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!